Hello and a huge welcome to Jeff Booth, who is well known in Bitcoin circles, serial entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and best selling author of Price of Tomorrow. Welcome aboard to Bitcoin People, Jeff. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks for having me. It's absolutely gorgeous to have you here. I'm going to jump straight into it. And we know a lot about everybody, many people who are watching this will know you and will know your work, but some people may not. And so my opening question is this. There's a lot of problems we could be focusing on in the world. We have the conflict in Russia, Ukraine, we've got Sri Lanka, we've got poverty, we've got endemic problems that have been around forever, we've got malaria, we've got the increasing wealth gap in the West, we've got homelessness, climate change, there's enormous issues that we face. You and I are going to be talking about inflation and deflation. It seems not only incredibly boring to many people, but it seems trivial in relation to all of the above. Not only trivial, but is it even a problem? I think a lot of people look at this and they think to themselves, no, no, inflation is good. It means growth. The central bank targets 2% inflation. Surely that implies we want inflation. And your book implies something very different. So why are we talking about this, Jeff? Why is this an issue? Um, because it's a foundational uh, level change that society is going through that they don't, most people don't realize they're going through. And what's ending up happening is um, all of the problems that you're talking about are actually magnified by the existing system and they get worse under the existing system. And the system can't solve those problems. In fact, the system is responsible for those problems and, and will be responsible for the, making the world worse. And if you, if you just kind of stop there and you just say, if you look at around society, you look around the signposts around uh, uh, that everything's happening, it feels like all of those discrete issues are getting worse and people are getting very fearful, locked into divisive dialogues on which side of the coin that they, 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 they're, they're on. But all of those issues if you just look around the world, are getting worse and worse and worse. So if the system could solve those issues, you think it might have already solved those issues. And so what if it was responsible for all of the other issues? And all those, those islands of misinformation are caused by the same system problem. And so that's what I explored in my, my book. And, I, and, 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 and that's what I've talked a lot about. And, and, and essentially what, why, the why is this. We have a, we have a um, the free market and technology is a deflationary force. And what that means is that uh, that deflation would bring abundance into our lives and prices would continue to fall. They wouldn't fall overnight. Um, they would continue to fall as more and more of our, our our labor went into technology and that technology drove abundance into our lives. Similar to how many photos you take today versus how many photos you might've taken 20 years ago. Um, it, it's, a, it's a construct to see what ends up happening with technology giving you abundance and the output of that is prices fall. Now technology is moving into every single area of our lives. So, that, so that you have to question why aren't prices falling all over in our lives, um, it, besides computers and, and phones, why aren't prices falling out everywhere? And what you find is it's competing against a system, a credit-based system that must make prices rise. And so when we talk about inflation, that's what you're talking about, a credit-based system that must make prices rise unnaturally against the free market. And when you have that two systems moving exact opposite. So one trying to bring prices down and uh, our time up, our abundance up, and one doing the exact opposite, stealing our time and making us work in, harder and harder to remain trapped in the system, to have more jobs to create because you're debasing money underneath. And so when you have effectively human action all over the world is just trust. 
You can't, you can't, money is information that describes that trust. And so when you apply misinformation to that trust all over the world, things break. What, what happens that emergent system that we call that emergent system that we call, it's not just economics, it's how we act together as human beings. When it breaks because you're manipulating money, which is this information bond between us, and you have to, and you have to, to protect the credit-based system, apply more and more misinformation, then you can predict that society is going to move apart really quickly um, and divide um, and, th and, th and believe their view of the world that's, that's, that's inside that system. And so, so it's a very difficult thing because most people, what they're doing is they're measuring their house prices by, by that system. Mm -hmm. They're measuring their job, the rate of their job by that system. They're measuring everything from that system that is getting worse and worse and worse every day. That's a lot to take on board for someone who may not have heard you before. And I'm now in the space, what I'm trying to do is put myself in the headspace of someone who may be hearing these ideas for the first time. And there seems a lot in there that is counterintuitive because we've been sold on an idea that deflation is bad. Why do people see deflation as bad? How, that's actually yeah that's yeah. a really good it's a really good question and 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 it deserves an answer it deserves a really good answer right because if technology good or bad if technology makes our time uh, if technology reduces prices and we use more technology we could expect prices to come down and that is deflation it's product it's the productivity gains so why inherently is that bad um and and you find yourself okay well that's not bad it's actually what, why we, why we f create new ideas that offer value to society. And, and as, as one side of us were labor and the other side were purchasers, it's the, same, it's the same thing. So all of our labor is actually going into trying to make the world a better place. And the output of that, when we use those products, reduce prices. That's not bad. That's, that, that, that is what, what, what we do in searching for better and better ways. That's what the human spirit does. It looks for ways to solve problems in a better way. And the output of that is deflation. So that is not bad. What is why people get conflate, they conflate inflate that, that it's, it's bad for a credit-based system. Because if you have, if you have a credit-based system and you allow deflation from that credit-based system, the credit unwinds but today we live in a credit-based system and that credit-based system that what you think is money in the bank is a credit note in the bank and so if you allow that credit-based system to 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 start unwinding to the natural market then the whole thing falls all the way to the floor and society revolts because there's no food on the shelves there's no banks there's no and it would keep on falling uh, forever because we live in a credit-based system and that raises a paradox right so nobody would vote for that for a long time nobody society wouldn't vote for that um and but the opposite says okay well we can grow forever in a in we can grow forever by manipul manipulating money and society will vote for that because they won't see the long-term implications of that theft of their money and theft of their time. And, and so they vote for more and more theft and it destroys the free market as you concentrate all gains into very few hands and society breaks in a different form. So that, that unfortunately to, to your, to your question that, that, that deflation isn't a bad thing. We've been, we've been, accustomed to thinking it's a bad thing because we've lived in a credit-based system that requires more inflation to survive. And that inflation must, at 2%, if, if you just said inflation is theft, because it is, it's like somebody walking into your house, stealing your money and transferring it to somebody else, especially for the middle class and poor, they, uh, because they don't have assets. So it's like walking in your house, stealing your money and transferring it to some, somebody else with assets. Um, because inflation is wage deflation. So 
at 2% though, people don't notice, but at, but as that inflation has to increase because the debt is increasing and the debt can't be repaid out of the system. So you're manipulating money at a greater extent. They start to notice 15%. They start mm. to notice that my wages stayed the same, yet my cost of living went up 15%. My food went up, my rents went up by 15% and they start to notice. And so late stages of where we are, because people are, confused about what's happening they race to the same problem this the person creating the problem or a different government mm -hmm. to say and what ends up happening out of that is you blame others and you want your free money or you want as much free money so you vote for more and more inflation to be able to protect the very thing that's hurting that's destroying our world and so um and, and so it's more of a human nature thing and 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 we wouldn't vote for that change. We would, it's it way easier to, to believe it's those bad people. And it's mm -hmm. way easy to manipulate us into going to war to reset a system than it is say we have a system problem and let's think about how we solve that system. As you talk about this systemic issue, what goes through my mind, and I was chatting about a, uh, chatting about this, of course, with a, a friend last night, and we were talking about how it seems easier in many ways to focus on something like climate change. I'll take climate change because a there seems to be a very obvious cause, or in many people's mind, if they simplify the issue, there seems to be a very obvious cause. And B, I feel like I can do something about it. I can recycle my um, garbage. I can minimise my car usage. I can catch public transport. When we start to talk about giant credit system-based problems, when we're talking about systemic problems, whatever they may be, A, they're very difficult to see because we're right we live in it. It's all we've ever known. We were born in it, particularly anyone born after 1971. This is all they've ever known. Number two, what else is going through my mind on this? So I'm in it. I can't see it properly because it's the air I breathe. I, I'm a fish in water. You know, how do I see or feel the water? And B, what can I do about it? I can't they seem, recycle they, my, my garbage. Yeah, they seem like big issues. And in the world that's breaking apart fast, you'll find all sorts of other people who reinforce your issue like it's the most important one. And that reinforcement of your issue like it's the most, it builds these, these crowds that feed back onto it. Let's, let's just take climate change as an example. Um, for or, or, or instead of climate change, let's take CO2 uh, carbon. In, sure. in the uh, um, in and so so there is evidence that the carbon is increasing and that evidence may mean that that climate change could accelerate there's it, it, there, there are a whole bunch of other things maybe it changes course and everything else but there is there it seems to be that there's more co2 in 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 the oxygen day that's man -made, that that's man-made it's right it's rising so now how do you solve that problem from the existing system you were you're led to believe that we can solve that through technology and solar and and, and other uh, renewables and 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 so let's imagine solving it with technology and, and solar so if solar wins um, or if nuclear wins or if any of these other win they will win because the free market forces because they become less costly Mm -hmm. um, and, and they'll drive price down and then the market will race in to exploit the price coming down to be able to build, build that abundance. And so you'd have an energy abundance and prices would fall to all society as a result, but that can't happen from the existing system. This existing system, every time that happens, you have to mon manipulate money at a greater extent to capture that gain that just captures that gain in um, at the very top 
central banks or, or to the people at the very top, the largest companies, mm-hmm. that, that to keep the system solvent, don't allow the, 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 the lower prices to meet market. And so that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say inflation is climate change. It, um, it's an unsolvable. If you, if, you know, if, if you believe in climate change, the only way to solve climate change is from a system that allows that productivity to be, to be broadly transitioned to society. It's the only possible way. It can't be solved from a system that, can, that grows forever on a finite planet by manipulating money. And, and so, so that's, and you start to see some of these issues that we believe are big issues, that society in general are ba- believe are big issues, are caused by the same system. That, that, and, and so if you overlay CO2 in the oxygen and monetary easing fiat, fiat currencies, and you see the chart of the exponential chart, that chart matches the monetary easing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which makes perfect sense. It, and, 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 and then you ask yourself, well, okay, why are, his energy price, why are energy prices so high today? Um, they're so high today because, because there's been lots of technology and energy. There's been lots of new sources of energy coming on stream at lower and lower costs. And even in, even in, in, in if you said fracking and oil and gas, new technologies that bring more abundance to, uh, to, to energy. So why are prices going up? And you'll find the exact same thing. You find that prices are going up because they're manipulated to do so. And they have to keep going up for fear of the exact entire system collapsing. Okay. I think for the sake of anyone who may be listening, who is not familiar with this conversation, that really takes place in the Bitcoin community a lot is about this credit-based system and the problem with the credit-based system. I think there there may be, I may be entirely wrong, but there may be people who are listening who don't understand the cause of the credit-based system, what it actually is. What are we talking about? Let's define credit-based system. So definition, cause, and now I think we're seeing the problems that, that result from that. But let's just go into that. I think we need to get into some tin tax here. So the start of World War I was really caused by a fiat type of currency system that was breaking down all over the world that had to be, that had to be solved for global trade, for global coordination of mm-hmm. trade with every nation trying to print their own fiat currencies. You could imagine first there's trade barriers, then there's uh, then there's work, then there's fighting, and that fighting explodes. And then then that, that was really sorry just to to interrupt there and to clarify that was really because it was the first example of where we came off the gold standard or where they tempor- temporarily came exactly. off the gold standard in yeah. order that they could create as much money as they liked in order that they could buy all the armaments and extend the war for as long as they wanted. Frankly, right. And then you move into World War II, and that system wasn't solved in World War II, mm-hmm. and so, which created World War uh, sorry World War One. It wasn't solved in World War One, which created World War II, a rise of dictators and, and a rise of uh, 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 of division all over the world. And into that division rises dictators who who it's 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 not our fault; it's their fault, and 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 population just goes along with it. And in after World War II, you had the Bretton Woods system tied to back to gold and the U.S. Mm-hmm. dollar. Um, and the Bretton Woods system is essentially kept a range of of gold convertible to dollars um, that that couldn't be manipulated. But then, because it was convertible into dollars, and the U.S. couldn't pay back its bills in 1971, the gold got removed from the system. We repriced the gold in 1971. And, so, and when France demands the payment in, in, of the gold, transfer the gold back, US says, no, we're revaluing gold. And so you had the effective end of Bretton Woods, the stable system that is responsible for a lot of the prosperity that people believe mm-hmm. in, in, in the world, a uh, growing middle class in the, in the world, because of the same thing, because when gold is centralized, um, over time, the rules change. 
And so, so then you had a fiat based system that is just every country in their own. And you had an expansion, a massive expansion of credit and that credit, uh, for one of the stats in my book over the last 20 years, you've had $185 trillion of growth of credit for $36 trillion of growth of, 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 uh, of GDP. It's and so just it, a it, crazy it, stat that it blows my it, mind every time it, I revisit it. And so, so you have to, so you have to ask yourself, is that sustainable? Mm-hmm. And is that growth? If you're actually having to create essentially four new dollars for every one dollar of growth, mm-hmm. um, and that has to get worse because those two systems move afar apart. Like, and, and that's why in, from my book that was written in 2019. Um, and so today we've had just an acceleration, way more credit growth for less GDP growth. And so, so you, because, because the productivity gains from society are negative GDP in a lot of cases, because mm-hmm. they make prices go down, you have to keep the Ponzi scheme going of manipulating the money at an ever increasing rate. And so that's what you, that's, that's what you see today. And that, so that credit-based system though, if you stop the whole thing collapses. If you stop adding more currency unit, the whole the whole thing collapses. So today, when when even in in uh, you'll see uh, Powell tightening mm-hmm. and and interest rates going up, you'll see every, you'll see credit markets themselves breaking, and other countries not being able to pay back their liabilities because they're denominated in U.S. dollars, and U.S. dollars is getting stronger, and their currency is getting weaker. And they're trying to buy energy in their currency and energy is going through the roof and it's and and in their country or and food prices are going through the roof and energy prices are going and they're in their country they don't have a solve people in in europe you're going to have you're going to have you're going to have blackouts you're going to have you're going to have people freezing in, in in the winter because they don't because they can't find enough energy at the price they want to pay for energy all, all from the, all from this system getting worse and worse and worse. And when you do that to society, it's easier to blame a victim or it's easier to blame somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so when you talk about the credit-based system that we live in, that's the credit-based system we live in. And it has to expand forever because the entire economy is built on that credit. So if you, if you allow the credit to collapse, the entire economy starts to go into a death spiral and collapse and then people ask well what is money in the first place if money is only credit and the credit disappears it was it really money in the first place Mm -hmm. so that and this is the rabbit hole we seem to go down as bitcoiners that seems like a sheer madness to anyone else outside we start to question well what is money what is real money what is hard money and why is it important? And so, uh, and, and I don't know how long I want to keep pursuing this line of questioning, uh, but I'll keep it up if only because if there's one interview that I'm going to ask friends and family to listen to, it's going to be this one. And so, <laughs> so. Uh, I'll stay on this path and be the spokesperson and the voice for them, if you like, uh, for at least another question or two before uh, before kind of branching off and, and, and deep diving into some other stuff. So I'm hearing you. I'm understanding now, you know, the credit-based system and how it exacerbates all the other issues. So it, it's as you we talk about it constantly as this idea of this Ponzi scheme and it's a house of cards and it's this constant chasing of growth. And it, it you know, the sense that it can't stay this way forever. And, and then when we start to question it, we end up with the question of, well, what is the basis of all of that? The basis of that is money. What is money? What is good money? What is bad money? What money creates problems versus what kind of money what kind of money and by money i mean the system is that what you mean by the system see to me i'm thinking money is the or maybe it's the enabler of the system yeah so so what i would say the easiest way i frame this because um is money is only information 
and 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 if you and and it, it, you can prove what I just said is true in in the fact that if money wasn't just information, a Venezuelan bolivar would be the exact same value as a U.S. dollar. Mm-hmm. So money uh, money is information, and it describes the ledger of what you have versus what you think it, you, you need to achieve the outcomes you want, right? It's just information. Um, and we don't actually want more money. What we want is, is more, is, and, and some people too, but even the people that want more money, what they're really describing with the want of more money, they want the, 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 what the feeling of more money gives them. And that feeling could be, I'm more powerful than the next person because I have more money. I, the feeling could be more people will love me if I have more money. The feeling could be I can provide for my family in a better way if I, if I have more money. But they're describing the feeling, not mm-hmm. money itself. Money is just information. So it makes perfect sense that if you grant authority to create misinformation and money by creating more units, but everybody is living in the system with that money, then you'd have informa- misinformation spreading throughout society. But people would be very confused because they, they'd be living with that misinformation everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and they'd be living there because you've granted a central authority to say, create more misinformation at money at an exponential rate. And so in that world that we live in, it would get awfully confusing. And you'd be listening to other people on top of that. And everyone would think that they knew better what to do about that, what the problem was, and you would see society ripping apart, what you see, what you see today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, and, 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 and so for, and, and one of the things, but, but we don't typically understand the plumbing that gives rise to the, the, the to an emergent complex system that we call a marketplace social interaction we don't we don't normally go down to the plumbing level very much right so so we just trust okay somebody else has got the money thing that's okay because this is always this has always been okay and we don't and so we we're a layer on top of that and very rarely until we're forced to through Mm -hmm. kind of an event well what's going on here and so what you're seeing when you talk about bitcoin rabbit hole you have you have two different groups of people and one group growing really fast on Bitcoin and a, a new emergent system that would have a different uh, a different characteristic on, uh, on the way through. And you have an existing system that is getting worse and worse. And that your frame of the lens, your frame of lens, your frame of the world, mm-hmm. depending on the system you're in, will reinforce back to you what's ha- what's happening. Yes. Right. And, 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 and you will believe that system and they'll keep it. You'll look for evidence that it's reinforcing and you'll, and so, so, and it's because we, we don't typically go down to the plumbing level. We we're up here trusting somebody else has got that plumbing. Right. And, and we think about the, the products and services on top of the plumbing level. But if the plumbing itself, if the system, if, if you just said this, all inflation is it really simply, it's theft, right? Somebody walks into your house and steals your money at 2% a year. I mean, you give them the right to do that. And then when it gets to be 15% a year, you're wondering, hmm, what's happening? And so if, if you've designed a system that you have corruption in the base layer, mm-hmm. then the emergent nature of society on top of that system would have to look like more and more corruption in the system. Yes. And, and, and it would, it would have to, and what you would, what you'd have is you'd have a system designed for the worst in human beings Mm -hmm. rather than the best in human beings. And it would just move and move in that direction. And so, so Bitcoin itself is, is because it, because it's a system that you can't manipulate. It's the first time society Mm -hmm. has ever had decentralization and security together. Um, which is a really big deal because, because what that means, what that means is we always had to trust in, in, 
in a, essentially a central organization or an institution mm-hmm. because we couldn't tr- we couldn't have decentralization and security together so we trusted the institution to protect us and then we developed laws like the magna carta or or the constitution or the declaration of rights and freedoms to protect us from the institution getting too big and actually hurting us right Yep. And so, and then all over the world where you had the highest kind of degree of law and freedom for society to be able to thrive and create more, more, more economic value, you had vibrant economies and, and where you didn't, where you had centralized controlled economies, living standards went down because, because the central could control could never be as innovative as the free, as the free market. And, and so, and, and, and then you have to ask yourself now, okay, that sounds okay. But, but, but then if, if printing money was this, was, is printing money wasn't a pro or wasn't a problem for society and manipulating money wasn't a problem for society, then you would expect all of the nations with the most manipulated money would have the strongest laws. And they have it, it's exactly the opposite. And what you, so what you find is money is superordinate to law because the people who control the money control the laws. And as you, as you move into that and the, and the big companies that control the money control the lobbying to the laws. And, and, and as that gets deeper and deeper into manipulation, you can easily see what happens to society. So you have Bitcoin that is for the first time in history decentralization and security together and no government, no one can stop it. Mm. Um, and, and that changes a paradigm. It changes a paradigm to the world. We've never been able to see um, because now you can, now the rule of, uh, of law on top of something that's stable is stable is uh, uh, and, and, and so this is early in the design. It is early in the transition. Mm-hmm. And you're, and re- remember the existing system you're looking through and measuring your wealth by or your, or your life by is four orders of magnitude bigger than Bitcoin, Bitcoin today. Um, so not four times, four mm-hmm. orders of magnitude bigger. So yeah. it's going to feel way more powerful. And, and but, but I, it, here's, here's the way that I think about it. Um, Sears was on four orders of magnitude bigger than, uh, than Amazon. If, if, if you, if you were at Sears, if you were an executive at Sears and your frame of the world was Sears, Mm -hmm. um, it from 1995 to 2010, you would have a certain view of the world and it would get, and life would be getting harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And if you were an executive at Amazon and, and, and your frame of the world was abundance and what was happening, your things would be getting better and better. And they're just two different frames, one trying to protect the old, one driving value to the new. And depending what frame you're in, you'd see, you'd, uh, uh, you'd see a totally different world emerging. Now, now, what if that frame that we just used a company frame as an example, but what if that frame was the actual frame of um, every little bit, every piece of underlying value in the world, it, because it was tied to money, Mm-hmm. and money was superordinate to every other decision what would that look like and and out of what i just said there is that's actually why you understand when when you see what with, with, with the whole bunch of people you meet in bitcoin the truth hope abundance and, and mm-hmm. they're building to a better to a world that they cannot believe other people can't see and the further they get down that that road and the further people are inside their existing frame, it's getting scarier and scarier. They, they're, they're yelling, Bitcoiners, you're yelling at other people and polarizing them more. And all it is is two different frames competing for our attention. One frame driving uh, truth, hope, and abundance. One frame driving scarcity, coercion, and control. Um, but I don't... Uh, I don't, when I, when I think about this, I actually feel empathy for people that are in the other frame. Mm. I feel, I feel like I, I'm, I'm sorry that they're in the other frame because, because they're, because 
what they're reading on the news, what they're seeing is not where the world's going, even though we're early in, in the transition. So hopeful. And I mean, I was in Miami. I got to see you speak live in uh, earlier this year in April. And the vibe around that Bitcoin conference was so positive and so hopeful and um, focused on a bright future in a way that I have never heard. And I'm a similar age to you. In fact, I think I'm exactly the same age as you. Uh, and I have been brought up, I mean, part of this is to do with my family, but part of it is just to do with broader society. Uh, and I was brought up during the Cold War. It's just time, and it's been one fear after another, after another, and there's been, you know, the, the rise of terrorism, and there's been, there was the 1970s inflation, and there's just been, there was Y2K somewhere along the way, there was, you know, and yet here we've got all this positivity and hope for the world based on a potentially abundant future, um, but that requires a complete systemic overhaul. So there are two things going on here. First of all, I've got to ask the question, are we completely mad? So, so I, I, I constantly try to disprove my hypothesis. Yeah. Constantly. Try, not just on Bitcoin. So yeah. is Bitcoin the solution? So just what else could provide that, if any? Um, but also the hypothesis in the existing system and anywhere I could be wrong and I'm constantly trying to disprove it. Mm -hmm. and, and all evidence keeps coming back that, that reinforces it. Because if, if I was right, and, and you've read my book, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it predicts all of these events long, long before these events are happening. Um, and, 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 and so that continues. And so you're seeing, you're, you're seeing these two different systems colliding into these other and, and, and the instability of the existing system has to get worse and it has to take control and it has to remove control from individual people. Um, and it has to, I'm sorry, but brainwash people for, uh, for control, um, uh, in that now, the one thing I don't do typically is blame people for a system problem yeah. or conspiracy theorists or anything else. I'm not saying that there's not some evil people in the world, yeah. um, but, but most of this is caused by a system reinforcing it itself. And if you were at the top of that other system and you had a choice for your society, that is a complete chaos of the entire banking system and, and the entire world order, you would kick the can down the road or you'd try. And, 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 and so, and, and, that, and so when you realize that the system problem doesn't have a fix from the system, you look for an alternative solution. And when, and, and so as much work as I've done on the existing system and did it have a fix I've done on the exist on, on the new emergent system, which is Bitcoin and what that looks like. And what I, what I've realized is I'm going to spend way more of my time investing in uh, investing and mentoring the entrepreneurs that are building on top of the new system, because similarly that we don't question the plumbing in the existing system, when you're teaching Bitcoin right now, and you're trying to teach the plumbing, mm -hmm. but people experience value through the products that are delivered, the next layer, that's what's happening in Bitcoin now. And it's, 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 it's early, early, early. The next layer is the value that it was going to be delivered on top of that system yeah. is going to be incredible. And it's going to bring more and more people onto that. And so I, I get to invest in that space before it's actually even great created. And so you can imagine just a different framework and seeing, mm -hmm. seeing all of these entrepreneurs, what they're able to do on top of that system that brings, brings massive value to society. And therefore, through that massive value, way more adoption to this network. It's hard not to get really positive about what, the, what that looks like because I, that's where I live all, uh, all the time. And, and I, for, for people that aren't, that obviously you wouldn't be as deep on this, just think about 
if you were around in kind of 1990 or 89 when when http Mm -hmm. was on layer four most of the world didn't see that what the internet would uh, would do and and what uh, what so even in 95 if you understand what the internet looked like and we're using that same technology right now that's mm -hmm. yes. that the, 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 we're using the entire stack right now that looks exactly the same that that most people and all of the value we only we experience the value through the products that connect us and give us more value. And those products typically come way later than the underlying plumbing that is that gives rise to those products. And so that phase, that's where we are right now in Bitcoin. And it's just, it's early, but it's a protocol level technology that, build, that, that rebuilds a peer-to-peer -peer internet on top of a stable foundation. And, it, and, and it's growing extraordinarily fast. So if I'm listening in, I'm busy in my life. I'm a nurse. I'm a single mom of two kids. I'm spinning at a million miles. You know, I'm racing, just trying to keep my head above water and, and pay the bills. I see certain technologies come in that change the efficiency of my life and my capacity to get things done. I get a mobile phone, I can see it improves communication, but it also gives me a whole lot of shiny apps that make my life more convenient and better in a whole lot of ways. I perhaps didn't see the benefits of internet before it came to fruition, but I certainly see the benefits of it now in terms of my ability to look stuff up and to connect and, and find out what I need and get things at the snap of a finger, you know, whether that be physical products or whether that be information. How do I start to comprehend the kind of benefits that we could see out of Bitcoin? Because perhaps all I know about it at this stage is I've heard the word and I've heard that it's a very volatile investment. That's it. That's all I know about it. Yeah. So for, first, um, when, you, when you don't have time, when you're in that frenetic pace, or, or fear-based, you can't mm -hmm. see opportunity. It, it, it's, uh, if you've done any work on the mind, how we think, we actually narrow our thinking and we can't see all of the, the opportunity in that. So when you talk about the nurse, that her cost of living is going up fast, she's got two kids, they, she's, she's worried about, I'm working tirelessly mm -hmm. and I don't have time to explore what you and I are talking about because I have to work harder to be able to pay the bills, to be able to escape the very system that's causing me to work harder at that and do this. And it's getting worse and worse. So if you say the through line of what all people in society in the system are doing, that's what they're doing. And they feel it. The, mm -hmm. the anxiety that's the anxiety on, 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 on people today is from that because they're, 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 they're less hopeful about their future because the system is, is, is stealing that. And, and so, so first it's kind of a pause. Um, and first I'd say, because understanding Bitcoin at the level that we're talking about takes, takes hours. It takes a hundred hours. It takes, it takes time. It takes listening to podcasts like you're, you're doing. It takes researching for people to, uh, people to do that. And they almost have to pause out of the existing system, whether, whether they get rug pulled from the existing system and they come to it like, what and it changes the world or, or they just step back and they say okay i just uh i need to spend some time researching this and thinking it would be the most valuable thing they could do mm -hmm. because the that that thing now takes them down a path into hope and what this could could look like once you're there and you're you're kind of where you are carrie as you start to as you start to see that you start to you're around a whole bunch more people building to a different future, and you start to see more and more opportunities, and those opportunities it's still early, so I don't want to say and, and I don't even I wouldn't even know all of them even though I'm investing in the space, mm -hmm. but we've seen 320 companies in the last three months done diligence on 320 companies, and and I can tell you what's coming, that's not here today is going to blow people's minds and creating more value. 
Um, and, and, and that's a really exciting, hopeful, yes, the companies are going to do really well as a, a res, result. Some of them will fail. Some of them do really well, but they in turn do well by providing value to a whole bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. And when you can now, when you now don't have to th- do all of the research underneath to be able to understand Bitcoin, but you can experience the value from a product that gives you, gives you a whole bunch of value. It starts to become easier to see. Are we allowed to get like just a little bit of inside information into one example? Uh, well, well, Fetty is a good example of something that we've already uh, announced. Um, and and so what Fetty will do um, through Chowman uh, Chowman Mints and Chowman's Cash is is effectively give probably the easiest way to explain it to an audience that uh, might not uh, understand Bitcoin is. Bitcoin to be able to self custody feels complex. Trying to figure out, okay, who do I trust? Because we're used to trusting our money to institutions and Bitcoin is self custody and you're having to do it yourself. And so that, that break feels, it feels risky when it's actually carries less risks than an institution. Yep. And, and so it, because, because, and then, and then how do you, how do you pr- protect your, your seed words? How do you protect your heart cold storage and everything else? And there's a whole bunch of work to be able to do to, to provide protection for you. That is actually very, very secure if you do it right. But very many people from the existing system, as they move over here, they just move into trusting somebody else an exchange. Mm-hmm. And that exchange now has high risk because that exchange can lend out your Bitcoin and you can, you think you have Bitcoin, but you might not have Bitcoin because the exchange could fail. So it imposes a huge task tax on, on people moving over that might get hurt, even though they think they have Bitcoin because their Bitcoin isn't in self-custody. And what, what Fetty, what Fetty does is it, is it utilizes essentially multi-sig, but it utilizes a, a group of trusted people, uh, of friends, a small, a small network of friends or any community. And, and, they, and, and you can validate each other's Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin. So if you lost your Bitcoin and you went to your mom and said, hey, it is actually my Bitcoin. And you went to your dad, who was the other person, they, um, they could reinstate your Bitcoin. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's you, so, just great. And, and so that's part of it. So it, it's kind of a middle ground where it, on, on, on shared, cu- shared custody, where you can, uh, where, 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 they, where you have relationships that you trust that now you can, you can do that. I still, I still prefer myself self custody, but, it, but it's a really great middle ground where you could you could onboard and the other side of it is it provides massive scalability and security to the network um because because it's all the on top of it it's all off-chain transactions so you're building you're building scalability into this so in other words governments can't stop it anywhere in the world so if you have a, a rogue nation trying to to stop they can't stop bitcoin alone but with with this on top with this on top of it, um, then you would never know. You don't know that you don't know the transactions. They're not on 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 chain. So uh, so that company is Fetty. Uh, the protocol that they're building is Fediment. People could go look it up. Um, now that's complex where we are today. <laughs> from for people if they're just entering Bitcoin, that's probably a bridge too far. Mm-hmm. But what's going to come out of that? Is something that's really simple for people to use that brings adoption to a whole bunch more businesses and people and 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 and, and companies that is going to make people uh, they they might not even know they're using the underlying technology yes that's right and i actually heard uh mel is talking about this just during the week actually and the fact that um and i actually didn't catch all the detail it was on cnbc and i was kind of just catching it in passing, but it was fundamentally saying you won't even necessarily know that you're using Bitcoin underneath as the underlying product. You know, the, the really this is just about seeing those transactions, but you're using something that is so much harder a more real a more trustworthy, but without even realizing you're doing so. And it feels to me like that, that that's really where it needs to get to 
it's the usability factor, you know, who was using the internet back in 1995. It was mostly kind of geeks, but by 2000 or maybe early 90s. But Are you calling me, you call me a geek? It, never, <laughs> never would I do that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I mean, but that's one of the things we all love about you. I think this thing of, you know, one of the things that makes you so trustworthy, and I'm going to start tangenting now, away from the kind of the core discussion we've just been having about inflation and deflation. But one of the things that makes you so trustworthy is something that you said a little earlier about that you're always testing your own hypothesis. And the fact, and that's what made you successful as an entrepreneur. So we know that you have an effective way of doing that for yourself. And so part of the way I get into stuff like this, because I'm not a geek, because I'm not, and I, I mean that actually in a negative way, I wish I understood technology a whole lot better. Uh, and and I've challenged myself and I've gone down the track of kind of blockchain and trying to understand hashing and SHA-256 and like, like but I've gone down there and I've really tried to, to wrap my head around it all. So um, we do trust you for for those reasons, that ability to kind of really question, I've completely lost where I started this question now <laughs> and where I was going with it. Um, so, so where were we? We were talking about the new technologies that are coming out of it that, you know, we couldn't necessarily see. The internet had to become very user-friendly before we started to see the benefits of it. And that feels to me like what's happening right now in, in Web3 is things are becoming easier and easier to use so that we will be able to start seeing the benefits sooner than later. So I want to come to a timeline question because we've got the, uh, the, the kind of breaking down of the old system on one side. And we've got this building of a new system on the other side. If we go into fourth turning territory, we're in a crisis period that I think started around 2008 and goes through potentially to 2028 or more. Um, how do you see, is there a way of putting these things happen as we know slowly and then suddenly? Do you have a sense of time frame on the unraveling of the old system because i'm astonished it's gone as long as it has yeah so so for the the fourth turning of the book you reference um describes kind of uh these cycles um that happen but it, it doesn't actually tell you typically why and the cycles are because of human nature and a credit-based system that can't get paid back that the only get way to get paid back is through global conflict that then you reset and you start again on the same same model and why do you start start again on the same model typically anchored to gold is because you never had something like bitcoin before you had to you had to anchor something and so when people say what's the currency backed by it's actually a construct from the gold uh, from a gold-based monetary or commodity-based monetary system, that what they're saying, but they don't realize that that construct, because gold can't move around at the speed of business today, mm -hmm. you centralize it, and the construct itself creates a credit market on top that that banks couldn't make money if they were lending out your gold one to one, mm -hmm. a dollar note. So they leverage your, they would leverage the gold. And once the leverage is, is in the system, then there's a competition in the market to create more leverage because you make more profits and more and more risk inherent in the system. Because when everybody wants their gold at the same time, it's not there. Mm -hmm. That forces this, this thing to, to continue to build over time. And then when the banks fails, the bank, the, the government steps in, saves the banks because they can't have the destruction in society. And this constantly rebuilds to a point where we are today in the world, where the, you remove all the gold fiat based system. And, and that goes on for some, uh, for some time until it can't go on anymore. Because, because you, if, if the way to get wealthy in the world was just print more monetary paper, then don't you think humans would have solved that a long time ago? 
Mm -hmm. right? um, <laughs> if, if that was really the way that you could, you could create uh, uh, enduring wealth in the world, you'd think that humans would have solved that 5,000 years ago or something like that. So that, ba that base that gets just to get it's a road over over time leads to what you're talking about the fourth turning and there's no way to actually get out of that because what what people what people are worried about is the deflationary spiral from there they don't they they miss that the it was always inevitable by the credit that couldn't get paid back and keeps on manipulating people and time until you get there and then there's world conflict that you, you typically reset on the same system because there wasn't a different type of system beforehand. What's happening in this cycle, which is very different. Now there's chaos coming and I wish I, I wish I didn't have to say that. And that chaos could come from anywhere. And it's going to be, it, it, I would just say, if you take one thing away from this podcast, besides go and investigate Bitcoin, expect the unexpected. It's mm -hmm. bound to be, you're going to be blown away with what is going to happen out of the existing system and is going to feel normal that it would have 10 years ago felt what is happening. It's going to be normal course and that chaos is going to expand. I wish that wasn't true. It is, it is true though, and it's going to get worse. And then you're going to have a new system that's emerging. The difference in the new system, and I said this on stage at in, in Bitcoin Miami, is, is, is the base of the system is something decentralized and secure and you, nobody can change the rules. So the base of the system is scarcity and money creates abundance everywhere versus abundance and money creates scarcity everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's the base of the system. But, because, but instead of building a new credit-based system on top of that system, Bitcoin through Lightning Network Layer 2 solution or Fediment or others that are coming on top of, of this allow unlimited velocity in money. So you can beam money, what you talked about, Jack Mahler's, you can beam money anywhere to anyone, anyone in the world, and it can, it can travel lightning fast. It can, I can beam money to you. Um, you could beam it to somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. It could come back to me in 10 minutes and it could transfer 40 times in that 10, uh, 10, 10 minutes. And it, for fractions of a penny, each, tra each transfer. So when you have unlimited velocity and money, then you don't have to rebuild a credit-based system that's at the whim of human control to keep on manipulating money for velocity. And that, cha that change changes what you're talking about, those fourth turning examples where mm -hmm. you always get here and then it resets and then you get back here and it resets and you get back here. Bitcoin forever takes us out of that loop. That's mind blowing. Okay. Isn't some of that simply human nature? Bitcoin doesn't all, change it, human nature. You it, know, this, it, is, it, this is where I get a little confused on some of the violence theories, you know, the, the, the reduction of violence. Um, because, okay, so, so really the, the deeper question is how much is the system molding human nature and how much of human nature is human nature? Human nature is, a, is an emergent complex phenomenon out of the system. Oh. What you, and so what, what you think is your human nature and, 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 pro, pro, like just, and, and I'm going to give you a really bad example, but it's an example nonetheless. What was human nature of the Nazis? Yep. yep. Um, is your brain, is, is our brain, are our brains any fundamentally different than, than that time period in human history? And that's just one example. Our, it, it, human nature is an, is an emergent complex phenomenon out of this system. And your beliefs are the exact same thing. And so if you believe that a, that a system must have inflation and that in, in, and somebody is allowed to be able to do that, then society be organized around those beliefs and you'll feed into that and, and it'll get worse and worse and worse. And, and you will believe it and it'll, and it'll be a mirror back to you of your beliefs in society. We change the world. We literally change the world through our ideas and actions, but we might not see how much the, uh, our, our ideas and actions are influenced by the system that we live in mm -hmm. trying to drive a competitive nature 
to gain more money, more resources over somebody else. And so, so, so that emergent complex behavior, which is humans yeah. is, out, is, is from a system is from a system design. Is it? I, I just, I want, sorry, I want to keep pushing on this one because how much of human nature is just, is ape nature, is animal nature that is non-system related? So, um, because animals can, can be we, animals we can fight. Yeah. So we could spend, uh, we, uh, we could spend a lot of time on this subject uh, way more <laughs> probably than your, uh, but, but if, um, how, uh, here's a way into it that uh, we don't have to go as deep. Yep. Um, uh, human beings only have limited, limited time and limited energy and limited storage in their minds. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yep. Um, so you can't learn everything in the world um, at the rate that you would need to. So what you do is through money or information, we, we subdivide our strengths to be to, through division of labor to be really good at something and somebody else is, is good at something else. And, and what that allows us to do through that, what I called information, but through money, is it, uh, um, it when we have trust in that information is is it allows our brains to get connected in a supercomputer. And we, and, and because our brains are connected in the supercomputer, we have more ideas and that idea generation, because we don't have to trust that somebody else is trying to screw us over. We're, we're trying to build more and more value and we see more ideas and those ideas permeate through society and, and function as our living standards increasing. So, and, and then if you, if you follow that same, same, same thing, that division of labor all the way through society, through time, uh, and, uh, uh, through, through time, what you'll also see is um, the bigger cities had more supercompute because they had more people. Mm -hmm. And so the bigger cities had, an, had more value coming out of the, and more people moved to the cities because they had more supercompute. And then the smaller towns had less compute. Um, and you could see all across society that it would, it would keep on feeding back on, its, uh, on itself. So that's one thing. And so, but what happens in the biggest cities where you don't have trust and money? Do you have the same supercompute? And you don't. Because what ends up happening is our minds get linked together and I can't do my work I couldn't, if you think about what it would take me, my energy to, to take me to, to put food on my table and do everything that it would take in a day just to provide my standard of living. I couldn't do it by myself. I, it, it takes cooperation and that cooperation is what we call money. Mm. Yes. That is the information layer connecting the supercomputer. Yeah. And so, so if you don't have that, in, if that mess, if that information layer is corrupted, what will the supercomputer look like? Yeah, and what yeah. you're and, and that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying today in society. At the same rate, you're saying that it doesn't actually take the biggest city anymore because compute because technology has moved to a space like we have today, where we're having this conversation and it feels like we're in the same room and we're not in the same the same room. And that may and and so with satellite communication, with with energy being distributed through solar and, uh, and others chasing lower cost energy, then you actually don't need the big city anymore for the supercomputer to stay connected. You could be connected to anyone all over the world. And, and so, so you're, you're seeing a change, a, a massive change, um, but it requires um, to be able to coordinate human action all over the world. It requires trust and money. such a great explanation and such an interesting concept. I, I'm going to tangent a bit. Your brain is like the size of a planet. Um, to <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of um, Douglas Adams and, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Did you know, like, Marvin, the paranoid android? 
Lorenzi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have the character. <laughs> yeah. Marvin, the paranoid android, and you first meet him when you first meet him as a character, uh, and he's down um, working in the car park, and and I can't remember who meets him, and they go, um, brain the size of a planet. And here I am parking cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this awesome line. Anyway, I I want to, can I tangent a little bit and just ask yeah. some questions about you, Jeff? Can I yeah. just get to know you? Um, because this that, that's meant to be the nature of this podcast is getting to know Bitcoin people. Who are we as people and what were our backgrounds and uh and what I'm loving as I'm starting to do these interviews is hear some of the common themes in our values, in our characters, in our upbringings, that not, not necessarily our upbringings, but the way we thought about the world as we grew up. Um, and that will change over time, um, the same way that the people who first were fascinated by the internet and built the internet are not the people who kind of use it today. Um, I asked you a little bit in advance about your values. You, you've got this huge wealth of knowledge and capacity to bring in analogies that make it accessible, difficult concepts accessible. Where did that come from? Who are you, Jeff? Where does that come from? <laughs> I, 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 so you asked me my values, and I'd say my top three values are integrity, um, and 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 what I what I mean by that is um, do the right thing even when it hurts. So you know that little voice in your mind that that says, "Oh, I can make this right," but you know it's wrong. Yeah, right. And everybody has it. Mm -hmm. You know what's right. It feels, uh, you know, you know what feel it feels right. But you can convince you, you can lie to yourself really easy. When I say integrity, that's what I mean. Don't lie to yourself. Yeah. Um, cur uh, curiosity, um, because because, and that means that that means I'm okay. It's okay if I'm wrong. Most uh, I'm wrong many times, and and I I can't. But I'm I'm so open and curious to where I could be wrong, and that includes mistakes I would make to create value in my life. So I don't make those mistakes again. It's easy to, it is really easy to say, so it's easy to read a lot. I read 50 books a year, have for a long time. It's easy to read a lot and say, okay, I'm smart, but make tons or, or, or I'm not smart. I've, I've, I've brought in a whole bunch of new ideas into my mind. Those ideas have percolated and I've been able to see, see those. That's what intelligence is error correction. Um, and, and so, but what's harder to see is yourself, what you do to, to stop your own success. And that success uh, is mostly, so it's easy to say when you hit a wall, it's most easy to say it's somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. I turn the mirror on myself. And so I apply that same curiosity to it, it, do it, is a mirror reflection of my life. Is it something I'm happy with? Mm -hmm. Is it what, what has to, what, what would other people say about that, uh, that I'm, I'm close to uh, was my family and friend or my family a 10 out of 10 is my friend or my friend groups 10 out of 10. Cause if it's not, it's not them. It's me. Mm -hmm. I choose my time. And so, so I, I, th I think about that and then I think about, um, and then one of the, my values is empathy. Yeah. And what I mean by empathy, um, is, is walking a mile in somebody's shoes. And that doesn't mean I agree with them. It means I have to understand their viewpoint from their perspective, not my perspective. Most mm -hmm. people get empathy and sympathy mixed up. Yeah. Um, and, and, and empathy is really understanding where somebody else is. So you can meet them where they are. You don't have to agree with them. Mm -hmm. But what that allows me to do specifically in companies or found, founding companies is, is, okay, what would somebody else's life, what would they do if their life looked like this and what might they do if they were given a solve to that in some, some other way. So, you, so from there, you can predict human action um, because you, you can feel the pain of what, what your life would look like if you were in their shoes and you were, you had their upbringing and what there would that look like. So you can actually feel it and it get, makes you way better at understanding how to create solutions that are that, that are valuable so 
I don't know if that's who I am and maybe that's, but those are kind of three of my important values in, uh, in constructing. And then and what that would also mean is I'm not afraid to be wrong. I'm not afraid to, to, and if I'm wrong, I'll admit it and, and, and say, Oh, I was wrong here and change and, and look for area, areas to fix that error. Mm -hmm. Where do you think those values came from? Was a lot of that in your family? Have you grown up? Are you very different from your family? We we are all unique. Every single one of us is unique and special in our uh, uh, own ways. Um, and I'm no more special than any other person on the planet is. I'm different. And and my parents or each of them are unique too. But uh, but I did uh, what I did have growing up is tremendous love tremendous so when you have that mm -hmm. you can't really want anything else right mm -hmm. you have everything that's needed and you have a secure place safe uh, uh, a safe place and now what do you want what do you what what does your life look like you're able to create the life you you want so i so i actually had that and have that throughout you know, virtually all my relationships probably from the kind of I, I always knew it. I didn't know anything different. Mm. Back to empathy. I can understand if somebody didn't have it and what they might, why they might be making decisions that were unlike my decisions because of that. Not everybody who comes from that level of love and a background can appreciate and empathize with people who don't. Um, in fact, those I know, and I've got to say, I, I don't know that it's the majority who come from really deeply loving families and backgrounds actually find it quite hard to understand. It, almost exactly as we've been talking about when you're in the system, it's hard to see the system. When, often when someone comes from a really deeply loving background, they're very close to their family and they can find other people quite difficult to understand why someone might behave the way they do. How did that develop for you, that empathy? Uh, I've used this in a couple of exa examples on different podcasts, but, 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 um, and it's probably through business where I go, where I got here, but, mm -hmm. uh, um, kind of hitting my own wall, but I, but I use an example of kind of the victim analogy because everybody can relate to somebody who's a victim. Sure. And, and, and when they talk about that victim, they never talked about to the victim about why they're a victim, but they talk to every friend of theirs on why the person's a victim and they're wasting their time and they're wasting that person's time. And, and, but you ask yourself, what does actually the victim want? What do they want? Attention and love. They want love. Yeah. Right. And so, the tool for them getting love is by being a victim yeah. because when, when they were, when it, when they first used the tool, everybody came close and what they, they don't realize is they have a sign on their forehead pointing outwards that everybody else can read and nobody's going to turn the sign around about uh, uh, um, that the tool is actually putting them in a spot that people are moving further and further away. So the tool, the mere reflection that they have of the world isn't abundance and love. It's a lack of love and they're using the tool to try to get it and they're pushing it further and further away the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I find that I, 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 when, I, when I see that, and so what would they do as people move further away and they burn relationships, they double down on drama and create more pain for themselves mm -hmm. um, because they can't see the very nature of their worldview constrains uh, constrains their thinking because they're trying to get love through that tool. Now, if that's true for the victim, and everybody I talk about, it's true for the victim. They have a sign on their forehead, and they can't know. By the way, I'm I, I'm I'm kind of the the ninety nine percent of people will will not tell them. I'm the one percent who tells them in a way, but uh, but that that's for a different story. Mm -hmm. But. But I do it in a, because, because, and I don't, they, they don't have to change. They don't have to change at all for me. I just can't be, I can't be true for, to myself and be around somebody that I can't be true with them. So, so, but, but that, 
that was an important lesson for me because if that's true for them, where don't I see my, where don't I see where I'm doing it to me? Cause it has to be true for me. If, if it's true for them and it's the same thing, if you said, what, what does uh, the billionaire who works over and over and over away from their family um, and they want more and more money, what do they want? Love and attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they may be pushing away the very same thing that they want by trying to get it similar to the victim, just through a, through a socially acceptable norm that we call money because other people give them more and more attention and love because they think, and what you, what you realize in that is, is it's a sad existence or it could be a sad existence if that's what they're doing, that's what you're doing um, to, uh, to get that. Um, and if it's true for all of these groups of what we do and they can't see it and they do more and more to get further and further away from the very thing that they care about most, or they say they care about most and they'll tell themselves any lie because they can't see the mirror reflection, then it must be true for me too, that I wouldn't be able to see it in my own life. So I, I try to, I try to search for it. if I, and, and how I search for it is if I don't have everything I want, everything, if I don't have the life I design that I want, then it has nothing to do with the world conspiring against me. It's me conspiring against the world. And I, and I try to fix that. really powerful um really um a a beautiful way of thinking about it and and living the name of your uh venture capital firm is ego death capital yeah why why ego Uh, death? ironically i didn't come up with the name Uh, (laughs) my, my, my partners came up with the name and it just and it just fit i loved it but uh, but but my partners came up with a name and uh, and and what we're talking about right now is effectively where our ego hides the truth from us and we uh, and we can't see the way the world really works or might work in a different way because our ego is so uh, is so convinced um, to uh, trying to protect us and so so. So I loved it for that reason, but I didn't come up with it. And so, it, so everybody thinks I did because they see me show up and every, uh, in, in different interviews, but, uh, but I, it wasn't me. It was, it was Nico and Andy. <laughs> and it describes in many ways, not only uh, the big challenge we face at an individual level, but really what we've been discussing at the systemic level as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read your apparently favorite quote back to you, or certainly what was your favorite quote when you <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you put this website together some time ago. It says, um, and I actually think this is a Buddhist concept. You've said that it's unknown who the quote is from, but I'm pretty sure I should have actually double checked it. But I'm pretty sure it comes from Buddhism. But uh, what's your thoughts? They become your words. What's your words? They become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. To me, that's that's quite self-evident. The question that comes out of it for me is, watch your thoughts. Now, that's trying to understand the system from within the system. How do you watch your thoughts? Um, the... Uh, it's, it's actually how I, how how you see these opportunities as well. You say, "It does the world look like this, or is that a, a mental construct that I've put together that describes the world that that I'm living in?" Um, and and it, I, it, here's a business example that I've used uh, often. When BlackBerry came out, uh, or sorry, when Apple came out, um, I had a BlackBerry three years before the new iPhone came out. Um, I was, uh, at, they were in research and development of the iPhone and I didn't know that. So it was just an idea that somebody's had about a better way that the world would work. And when that idea came out and I was using my Blackberry, I was convinced no way I'm going to switch. I love my buttons on my Blackberry. And then all of a sudden I saw that and I experienced it and I switched immediately and I could have never predicted the change because it wasn't there before. Mm-hmm. And so what, what's happening today is we measure the system by the system and, and 
our ideas create the new system. And we can't see those ideas, but they're all from our own ideas. And that is what describes the world we live in. Everything starts with an idea. So, uh, so if you, it, um, so it's easy to, to blame where you are on a, on a system and stay in that system, or you could open your mind to new ideas and how things could, could look, look differently. Um, and you may just see, so I, I believe in abundance. I believe in hope. I believe in truth. I believe in uh, uh, freedom. And so when you have a, when you have that construct and you see what technology can do and where, where that can take you, you see different ideas. I, I totally understand why not everybody would because they don't have that construct, but it's just an idea. Feels like a beautiful and positive note to potentially start winding the podcast down. Are there any final thoughts you'd really like to leave with us that you feel we either haven't done justice to or that we, you were hoping to cover and we haven't done? No, just a reinforcement to, to uh, how, how once you understand Bitcoin, mm -hmm. it's easy. Uh, so for the Bitcoiners that are listening, um, it's easy to under it's easy to mistake everybody else not understanding it and say and, and say why can't they understand it when mm. three years ago four years ago five years ago two years ago you yourself didn't have any clue absolutely um, and 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 so but once we understand something we think that the world understands it and 99 percent of the world doesn't understand this so so i would say to any bitcoiners that are listening understand that that's what the, that's the world you're dealing with for anybody else that isn't a bitcoiner yet or wants to uh, become a uh, to, be, to be able to understand this don't just trust me and don't just trust the show or anything else um mm -hmm. it, uh, do your own research and understand the why behind it and if that's worthwhile worthwhile but do your own research with an open mind um and and you might just find that what we're talking about today changes the world. Here, here, um, and I'll um, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, if people want to follow this up, obviously there'll be a bunch of links that go into the show notes. Anyway, that people can connect with you, follow up some of what you've talked about, or um, websites that, that we should be checking in on. Just probably on Twitter is best at Jeff Booth on Twitter. Yep. yep. Okay. Fantastic. Jeff, I cannot tell you how much of a delight and a pleasure this has been. Um, truly an honor. Uh, thank you so much for making the time for reaching out on Twitter as you did. Um, just magnificent to meet you in person and to have this time and to be able to spread some of your thoughts and ideas to maybe a few folk out there who haven't seen and heard about you yet. So um, really, really appreciate it. Oh, awesome doing it, Carrie. Look forward to the next one. Fantastic. All the best, Jeff. Take care. Cheers. Man. Bye.